Welcome back to Cradle to Grave R. My name is Mark Gingrass, and today we're going to continue on our journey with some joins. Today I'm going to show you a few things that are kind of nuances that you might run into in how to solve these problems. So stay tuned. Let's, let's dive right into it. Uh, in the previous lesson, if you don't have it, we created two data frames, DF1 and DF2. At this moment, if you don't have it, I'm going to blow up this code so you can see it once I edit this video, and you can copy this code over again. So make sure you get the code correctly or watch the previous video and follow along to get this code already. So that being said, let's jump right to it. I have two data frames, which I've got nothing loaded into this environment yet, so let's go ahead and I'm going to run these by doing control enter on each one. And now I have the five observations of two variables, four observations of two variables. Let's look at those one more time. Up at the top left, we have ID and name. So ID goes from one through five, and name is just a bunch of random first names. No problem. So that was DF1. Now DF2 is city values, which has four city values and an ID that goes along with them. Now this ID is supposed to match the other ID in DF1 so you can connect those dots if you ever want to. But as you notice it goes from 3 to 6. So the ones that are in common are 3, 4, and 5. 6 does not belong in DF1 and in DF1 as you can see uh, the numbers 1 and 2 are not in DF2. So 1 and 2 are not in DF2. So there's some some little uh, issues going on here. Let's go back to the code here. Now we did a couple of merges. We didn't save these as, as anything. We just kind of printed them to the screen. Uh, so let's just do a quick recap, which will take you know 20 seconds here. Um, so I'm going to run the first merge, which is by the ID. So it's telling R, hey, use ID as the connector, as the match and pair. Right? So when you run that, you'll see that I have a, uh, down at the bottom left, three, four, and five are connected. It's an inner join only. And then as you can see in the next one, line 14, I have all equals true. So it's an outer join. It gives you one through six. Notice how it's got every single thing in both data frames. And then we have all X and all Y, which is a left join and a right join. Again, if you don't understand these, watch the previous video and that should clear it up a little bit. Now what I want to show you is when you don't have the same ID in each table. And what do I mean by that? Let's go up here to DF1 and change this from ID to something like customer ID, right? So I'm going to rerun this code so that I overwrite the DF1, right? So now if I look at DF1, we'll have cust ID and name, not ID. So now if I try to merge these, let me clear this screen so we don't get confused. If I merge DF1 and DF2 by ID, and again, you don't need to use by equals ID. R will try to compare and see what the IDs are, but that's a very bad program in practice. So I prefer to use by equals ID. So I'm going to run this first one on line 13. You'll see that it's an error. Uh, there's no uniquely valid columns. It's thunderstorming right now. So the ID did not work. So what we have to do is we have to explicitly say, hey, customer ID is actually the same thing as ID, if we know that about the data, right? So instead of by equals ID, we'll say by dot X, which means the left-hand side or the DF1 or the first parameter that goes into merge. So in other words, DF1, which is this, is the first parameter right here. So by dot X does not equal ID, it equals cust ID. But it still won't do anything because it doesn't know what to match that with with DF2, our Y value or our second parameter inside of the merge function. So now we have to do by dot y is equal to, and we'll have to explicitly say id. Now when I run line 14, you get the same exact result, but notice there's two different ids. So it's a, you know, it's a little bit of a nuance, but you might run into this quite a bit. And for now, I'm going to leave this video short so that you can understand that. So you can do things like that to make sure that you're, um, you know, you're assembling your data correctly. Your ETL is going to work out great. So. If you like this video, please like and share, and I will see you on the next one.